Dr. Sahal, um, you know, the, your accomplishments are extraordinary and you're, you're one of the, the, you know, someone who's a leader in the field of medicine and science. You're someone who's contributed, you know, terrifically to science in terms of, of developing new therapies and new and advancing care for patients. So I'm going to ask you a very simple question. What made you decide that you wanted to become a physician? Well, it's always a complex question, uh, but uh, I, I just was looking for some uh, field that would combine my uh, strong interest in science, but also my strong interest in uh, humanities and philosophy. And I always wanted to do something that would keep me in close contact with people, but uh, always a keen interest in science. So medicine uh, appeared to me as the best fit for that. Well, you know, it, you're, you're obviously, you didn't stop with just medicine. You know, you um, have a neuroscience degree, neurosurgery degree, and then you got turned on to research. Um, and your accomplishments in research are, are you know, extensive. I know that, that a goal for any scientist, clin clinical scientist, is to you know, develop new therapies for patients. You've done a lot of that. So if I was to ask you today, what would you say your greatest contributions to science? Um, and, and, you know, don't be humble here. You can tell us many of them because I know there are many of them. But what, what really you know, makes you feel the best and, and really the proudest? Well, first of all, I want to make clear that uh, I, I've never single-handed any contribution. I mean, it's really uh, the work of a, a team and in that case, uh, many teams. So probably uh, my main ability has been to be able to gather around the clinical questions, questions posed by patients to us, a, a group of talented people from many fields in neuroscience, molecular biology, uh, electrophysiology, a lot of approaches, cell biology, to try to tackle these clinical questions and try to contribute solutions. So probably my main achievement has been to be able to gather the right group of people and work together to, to address these questions. And obviously uh, this has been not always successful because uh, you, you try many things and not everything is working, but uh, we have been able to identify a, a mechanism that explain why people are losing central vision in retinitis pigmentosa and to identify the underlying uh, protein that uh, is responsible for that. And this is now after many, many years of work in transition towards the clinical trial and the very promising uh, preliminary data from uh, a lot of studies we have done. The other achievements, again, as a group, have been to try to restore vision using the prosthetic vision, artificial retina. And this is also now very advanced in the, in the clinic and very, very promising result. We have seen that in the webinar on the AMD, uh, which is re resulting from our, our work and the work of collaborators at Stanford in Paris. Uh, the other approach is to regenerate uh, cells in the retina using stem cell approaches. And again, after many years of work, this is in the clinic now and a very promising approach. And I want also to mention optogenetics, which is a, a new technology to reactivate uh, dormant cells in the retina to make them uh, able to detect light. So these are some of the program we started. You have to realize that some of them started almost uh, 25 years ago, some started 15 years ago. So it's really a lot of work by many people, but it's getting there. So, uh, and all of this is still work in progress. Uh, we have not solved uh, all the problems we want to solve and uh, a lot of work remains to be done. So the main achievement is never to give up and to try to translate a question which is unsolved into pieces of solution that could help people in daily life. Well, you know, it, it's exciting to work with you and see some of those things happening. And, and I've been working with you now for four years, but I know that the work and the science that you've been doing, you know, started much, much longer time ago than that. And, and you brought with you 15 years of very exciting experiences that you had at the Institut de la Vigeon before coming here. And, but in 2016, you know, you made a decision and, um, and to come to Pittsburgh become the chairman of ophthalmology. I'm gonna ask you, what convinced you that Pittsburgh was the right place for you, your family, to continue your legacy in science and medicine? Well, I think uh, 
first of all, I had decided that we would uh, come back to the U.S. Uh, and for personal reasons. And then we had to decide what, what was the location because I was very successful in Paris and there was no real need to change for scientific reasons. But we, I wanted to find a good place for my clinical activity and scientific activity. So we, with my wife, and uh, we, we saw several places. I got offers from uh, I think six or seven, eight places in the U.S. to, to, to settle there. And uh, which was promising in many of these, but Pittsburgh had a very good combination of both a, a good clinical department, very good clinical department, extremely strong science in the city, uh, the commitment uh, of the dean of the institution of UPMC at the top level to really support uh, the creation of a very translational environment, which, which means bringing together scientists and clinicians. And uh, also the city, the people are very nice. So we, I, knew, I knew nothing about Pittsburgh except what I could remember from my school days about the uh, steel industry, that's all I knew. But uh, we were very impressed with the city and the people more, even more. So it's really a combination of science, the ability to continue to do both clinical work and scientific work, and the very strong support from the institution. I want to name uh, clearly Art Levine, the former dean of the medical school, and uh, Jeff Romoff and uh, the team around him to, to support me. And then I met you and I met the INDF Foundation, actually the first day I came. Uh, and I was also very impressed by the fact that it's such a supportive uh, institution that is really helping us in every day. And I can testify that this is happening every day. Well, thank you. You know, again, it's been, I, I find it just an honor to, to be able to work with someone with all the abilities you have and, and to see the, the, the work that you do to lead to really helping patients. But um, one thing when you came, in 2016 that wasn't promised to you was that there would be a new building. So the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center, UPMC, is building a new vision and rehabilitation tower, which will be completed at the end of 2022, so we're told. Uh, tell us what you hope this building in, in this region in Pittsburgh and uptown in the neighborhood there, what we can contribute to the world. Well, you will, we won't know until we have done it. So it's going to be, a, it's really predicting something that has not yet happened as, as usual. Uh, so, well, the thing, ha what happened is when I came here, I have the ability to, to recruit a couple of very good people. We were we recruited amazing people, both clinicians and scientists. We, almost 30 people now we recruited to the department. And uh, this is very, this is wonderful. But uh, what I really wanted is to replicate what I knew was a winning formula that I established in Paris, which is really bringing together the clinicians and the scientists in, in the best environment. The other issue I was facing is that the location we are currently in Oakland is not very convenient for low vision and the old elderly people. So I proposed that we work on this uh, project. And because uh, the leadership, uh, Art Levine, Jeff Romoff, uh, uh, Leslie Davis came to Paris, visited the, the Chancellor, visited Paris too. They, they realized that there is an opportunity, uh, like we did at the National Royal Hospital in Paris, to really integrate in the same location, clinician, scientist, education, rehabilitation, all around patients. And so they decided to invest, and this was not a commitment they had made before I came, so this was a, a wonderful thing that they did. They have gone far beyond what they committed to me when they recruited me four years ago. Uh, and uh, this is now in the making. It's going to be a 450,000 square feet building devoted to innovation in vision care and rehabilitation and uh, very promising. So what we want to bring for this building is not just a new building. It's obviously this is always nice, but it's really a, a good experience for patients, the best possible experience, uh, being uh, really treated as a uh, the human being that need respect and need care, the, uh, the highest quality of care, the most innovative. We have been now the first in the US to apply uh, artificial retina with this new technology, the first to, the, to apply optogenetics to patients in the US also, so with this new technology. And many other things are upcoming. I, I can tell in every field of the, of the domain, we are really working hard to bring innovative care. But innovation is great, but you need also to make sure that access to care is available for everyone. So we build this uh, hub and spoke model which now comprises also telemedicine approaches and remote testing to really make sure that everyone in the area and beyond has access to high quality care for complex disease, but also for simple conditions that require just the appropriate level of care. So we have put in place a quality process. We have put in place a distribution of care approach uh, and uh, especially with a strong focus on the covering the needs of everyone, including the underserved, all the people that don't have access currently to care for many bad reasons that are unacceptable. Just 
never accept something you think is not right. And so this is something we want to implement through this building. The other thing is that because we want to integrate science and the clinical, we need to establish this dialogue, not only between scientists and clinicians, but also to educate people to that, give the opportunity to people in the neighborhood, everyone to access this level of science and care and really get educated to that. But obviously the utmost importance is the patient themselves to establish this dialogue. And we have many ways to do that including art. We are really talking about bringing uh, an art experience to teach about science, teach about impairment, teach about rehabilitation in this building. Another um, output of what we do is that because many of the innovations are leading to new therapies, these new therapies won't be developed if you don't create companies, if you don't create the entities that are able to invest the amount of money that is needed for any single therapy. We, any new therapy is costing hundreds and hundreds of, of millions of dollars. So no single institution can fund even one of them. So you have to leverage that. And this gives you opportunity also to create jobs, to create an economic dynamics. And uh, this is something that hopefully will happen. I've seen that happening in Paris at the very, very efficiently. So I, I think we can do the same. And I already see a lot of evidence that this is already starting to happen in our department. So the impact is first and foremost to treat our patients in this region, to provide the highest quality of care, to make it accessible for everyone, but there is no barrier, technological, financial, uh, education, that nobody is excluded from that. And then the output will be more better education for everyone better exposure to understand the benefits of science and medicine to society, and potentially creating many jobs and creating some wealth to the region that could benefit everyone. So it's very ambitious, I agree. Uh, also, we selected a part of the city that is uh, a wonderful part around Mercy Hospital, close to Duquesne University. And I think we have seen this part of the city. It can be also providing a case for integration of impaired people in the city and also creating an environment that is driven by innovation, but is really also making sure that nobody is left on the road, on the side of the road. Wow. You know, Dr. Sahala, again, I mean, a, a clinician, a scientist, but also really a true humanitarian. Um, I think for, for kind of Pittsburgh, we're, 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 it's been um, a thrill. It's hard to believe that four years have gone by already since we started working together, but Obviously, we have many things we want to accomplish, and uh, we thank everybody who uh, may be listening in in terms of uh, their support. But um, but uh, thank you, and and uh, uh, we'll uh, we'll look forward to many more good years to come. Yeah, the videos to come. Importantly, you're going to have videos of uh, people in the group and the team, and you, you'll see the talent that we have all around us. Talent that was in the department when they did, arrived, and talent we recruited to the department. And now we have an amazing team and growing team all the time with uh, wonderful people. Thanks to all the support we are getting, but also thanks to the attraction that this city and the, the project we are building together is uh, is uh, providing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.